The last video you watched in this unit of study showed an experiment where two people were holding opposite ends of a spring, and if the spring was oscillated at the right frequency, a standing wave can be generated. Now, a standing wave is a pattern of wave energy with distinct antinodes and nodes. The antinodes are the parts of greatest vibration, and the nodes are locations where there's no vibration at all. And this is just the effect of having a wave propagate in one direction from point A to point B, and then reflect off of point B and come back and interfere with itself. And this is what happens in microwave ovens. The microwave oven just has a large cavity inside. Um, there's a magnetron that produces electromagnetic radiation, probably with frequencies of several thousand megahertz, and then a waveguide, which takes the radiation and pumps it into the cooking chamber, and then you have electromagnetic radiation that propagates this way. And if the frequency is just right, you can create a standing wave pattern. Now that means there's going to be some nodes inside the microwave. And if your food was sitting right at the location of a node, then there'd be no intensity and it wouldn't get cooked. This is why we have carousels that rotate so that no part of your food stays in the nodes for any length of time. You keep rotating food in and out of the nodes to try to provide some sort of even heating. So an experiment you can try is to remove the rotating tray inside your microwave and then put inside a frozen pizza. Actually, another thing you could do is just set a um, piece of cardboard down that fits inside of here and don't even put in a pizza, just sprinkle a bunch of shredded cheese all over. And I've also seen this done with marshmallows or with chocolate chips, just any type of food that'll uh, melt. And now don't cook it for too long, put it in for a little bit of time and check it until it starts to melt. And if this part of the cheese just barely starts to melt and the rest of the cheese is solid, then there's another little melty spot and there's another little melty spot over here. Those spots will form as long as the carousel is gone and those spots are nothing more than the locations of the nodes in the standing wave. And so if you can measure the distance from one node to the next, that distance would be equal to half of a wavelength, right? So here's the thing. If it's a countertop microwave oven, you just rotate it, look on the back, and it should tell you what the output frequency is. This one, for example, has a frequency of 2,450 megahertz. So F is equal to 2,450 times 10 to the sixth hertz. And let's say, for example, the distance between these two melted spots of the cheese came out to be about six centimeters. Then that means the wavelength would be double that value of 12 centimeters, or 0 0.12 meters. Well, a very simple equation for electromagnetic radiation is speed is equal to frequency times wavelength. So let's see if these values are realistic. If you multiply 2,450 times 10 to the 6th hertz, and a hertz is cycles per second, times 0 0.12 meters, grab a calculator and see what you get. Yeah, I got 2.94 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Very close to the 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second we would expect. Of course, I didn't actually do the experiment. I made up this value. Um, but I have done the experiment before, and that's typically the values that you'll get. So I encourage you to try this one at home. Look at the back of your microwave oven, find the label that shows the frequency, and then put something in there that's going to melt and see if you can find the distance between the melted spots, otherwise known as the distance between the nodes in the standing wave pattern. Pretty neat.